Welcome to another episode of What's Happening with Real Estate, this time in Spokane, Washington, with Stephanie Murphy. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? I'm fabulous. How are you? I'm great. So a lot of our viewers have been asking about home buying tips, Stephanie. In this particularly competitive market that we have right now, where buyers are getting offers rejected and it's really frustrating, what can you do to help them out with that, with some home buying tips for potential home buyers? So... There's a couple of them that I'm going to give to people and they might not exactly like what I have to say, but it's the honest truth. And so <laughs> I'm kind of like a tough love honesty. deliverer. <laughs> um, okay. So the first and foremost is obviously be pre-approved and have your ducks in a row because there's nothing more frustrating than finding a house, getting under contract. And then all of a sudden now something happens to pop up in your financing and then you are left without options. So um, what I highly encourage all of my buyers to do is to make sure that when they are getting their pre-approval letter, that it's really the pre-qualification, meaning that they're actually going through um, the pre-underwriting process, which you're fabulous at doing. Um, so that's the biggest thing, because you want to have a couple of options of like an A, B, or C scenario, because um, with properties right now, you're seeing multiple offers. You're seeing people that are offering above and beyond what it's going to appraise for. Um, and a lot of them are saying that they're willing to pay the cash difference for that. So what I'm encouraging my buyers to do is to look at all the options that they have available, um, how to you know, diversify their funds if they had to, and then look at what uh, timelines are and just setting really realistic expectations. Um, that's been the number one thing too. Good point. Secondly, is I would say if you're coming to the Spokane market because it's so fabulous and so great, well, Newsflash should have listened to me like a couple years ago when I told you to do it because now it's in a frenzy. But it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to get something, but you might want to have to look outside of your original scope of where you were wanting to purchase and kind of put yourself ahead of some of the other buyers that are coming in. Um, meaning avoid those major hotspots. They're hotspots for a reason, yes, because they're highly desirable, but I can definitely tell you um, all of the outlying areas of Spokane County are growing. So if you're really serious about moving to Spokane or one of the areas around it, be willing to look outside of your initial parameters um, because you can find some success in some of those outer lying cities that are really not that far off, but you can still find houses that are still a good deal um, and that aren't necessarily, you know, seeing the 20 plus offers that you're competing against. So, um, Got it. so I mean, where you can go. by hotspots, you're talking about homes that are kind of in inner Spokane. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. More so Liberty Lake, Spokane Valley, South Hill, um, and then your, you know, North Spokane, Mead, Wandermere area. Those are your four major hotspots. Like, and really, truly, that's where a lot of buyers always want to start because it's the highly desirable area that is drawing them oftentimes to Spokane from out of town areas. Um, and so when they see those, you know, that's where they are wanting to focus. But again, there's some really great outlying areas um, that you have some opportunity to, you know, be able to buy or build or do something. And you're going to have to be patient and you have to get creative in this market because the inventory is just not there. Like that's no secret. It's not anywhere really. So you're going to have to look to see how you can find it, create it, or get in on it. Well, you know, it's underway somewhere. So. So while we're touching on the markets that are further away outside Spokane, tell me what you think the downside and the upside of those locations are. Um, so typically the downside that people, um, think with buying outside of Spokane is the commute to town um, for their job. But okay, insert this last year, a lot of off, um, opportunities now are allowing people to work remotely or telecommute. So therefore they can be working from home. So therefore a lot of people have a little bit more flexibility now. Um, a lot of people think that the amenities aren't in some of these outlying cities. But again, give it some time, it's going to be there. Um, I look at just Spokane in the last 15 years and the de development that it's had and the growth. It's, I mean, amazing to me to see how much we've done um, in such a small amount of time. So with that being said, um, like I said, if people can come in and have more of that longer, big, you know, picture uh, mindset and have a little bit of patience, they can get to some of those outlying cities and soon enough, they're going to be a part of the big city as well. So we're only growing and expanding. 
And what about the price comparison, Stephanie, between outside of Spokane and, and tell me how far are you speaking outside of the city compared to the hotspots you just referenced? Um, so literally somebody's commute could go from <clears throat> being in the inner city to, you know, 30 to 45 even an hour outside of Spokane. Like, and I mean like to the heart of downtown Spokane, which is like right there off of I-90 and Divisional College. Um, an hour north of there, you're talking up into uh, like the Chihuahua Callville area to the west of us would be out towards like the Cheney Medical Lake, um, possibly even towards like Moses Lake. You wouldn't necessarily have to get that far, but there are some outer lying, you know, cities that are out there. You really can't go to the east much more because you're running into Liberty Lake, Spokane Valley, Otis Orchard. Um, north of I-90, there is some room for development, but still not a ton because it's already being picked up by industrial people and then developers already. So it's harder to get in there too. And then as far as south, of town goes really you're looking at like Fangle, Fairfield, Rockford and a lot of those um, outer liar cities haven't really seen a whole lot of growth and I don't really know that you're gonna see that as fast as some of the others that I just mentioned and reason being is because that's a lot of agricultural and farmland um, mm -hmm. and then there's also a lot of wildlife um, or that's owned by the state of Washington too so um, that's kind of really your options is to go north and then to go west a little bit. Um, and then you can go, I guess, northeast a little bit too. All right, and what about the prices? Are there a price difference? Okay. There yeah, there, there definitely is. Um, something that you could see in town, you know, that's going for 500 plus, um, you would see probably in those outlier cities, probably in the 350 to 450 price range. So, and the other thing is you're not competing against a whole lot of other bids, which is driving the prices up as well. So. Got it. You can still right, get so. good value and good homes, you know, in some of those outlying cities is what I'm getting at. Great tips, Stephanie. Thank so you. one last thing, if you were yeah. to pick one area which you think has the best value for what people are buying, what would you say that is in Spokane? Do I have to give an honest answer because it's where I live? I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you're gonna have some neighbors, <laughs> Stephanie. Where is that? <laughs> so um, Deer Park, honestly, is truly where I think is gonna take off um, in that area. So anywhere between the Wandermere area to Deer Park, maybe even a little bit farther toward like Loon Lake because that's the biggest area for development and there's a lot of amenities. Um, and I was lucky enough to get on in on my house, um, which was new construction. There's a decent amount of new construction going in out here um, that was less than 300,000. So you would not find that in town right now at all for a house of 1600 square feet basically so that would not happen yeah so if you go to some of those outlying areas you can find some good stuff great tips don't be my neighbor <laughs> <laughs> well you're a good neighbor i know that to be true hey, thanks all right guys stephanie's contact information is going to be on the screen reach out to her by via email or a text or set her cell number will be there give her a call she's yeah. happy to help you i'm sure find some of those great deals in spokane washington thanks yeah. stephanie Thank you. Appreciate your time today. Until next time. Bye.